a romantic layout with paper flowers and a bit of paint, Zentangle earrings, block printed gift bags, and celebration banners. What do they all have in common? They're all part of today's scrapbook soup. Today's scrapbook soup has been brought to you in part by Michael's Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com. Everything's coming up roses, and we have a really cool scrapbook page to show you that Julie did of her wedding picture. I love this. Thank you. Did I give the game away? No, you did. This is actually, it's a picture of me and my husband actually at his sister's wedding. So oh, it is a wedding okay. photo, in fact. It's true. But it's beautiful. Yes, thank you. And this is going to be very controlled use of paint. I'm not usually a controlled person, but... We, we have noticed that, Jill. It's we, true. We've got that part. It's true. <laughs> I'm going to take a very dry <laughs> brush, and I just have acrylic paint on here. And I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to make a kind of messy but controlled circle. And I'm just going to fill that in. And I'm not worried about if there's a lot of white gaps or anything like that. The idea is just to get a little bit of color in there. You can see how I just have fun with the paint yeah. playing like that. And then I like to put my brush immediately in water because I never like those brushes to get crunchy right. and filled with paint. Because then you can't really use them exactly. anymore for painting. Other things, yes. It's true. I have one here <laughs> that's already dry. And um, you can see how imperfect it is. And I really, really like that look. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our photo. And now I have picked the orange from my scarf and from my husband's tie up, and I decided that that would be my central color. Mm -hmm. And so I've uh, gotten a collection of things here, of paper flowers and some fabric leaves and stuff that have that orange-ish color in them. So I'm gonna start with this large branch. And the nice thing about this is it's all wired. So you can bend it and play with it and move it around however you like. So I'm basically gonna ground my photo right at the bottom. I'm just gonna bend this into a nice pleasing shape that I like where I feel like, okay, I can have this little bit extend up here. I can wrap it around so it's down below, whatever I like. So I'm just gonna lay it out. So the first thing I'm doing as I'm thinking about designing this right. uh -huh. is just how to put it out. And I like this, but it still feels really sparse to me. It doesn't have yeah, that lush, romantic feel. Lots of flowers. Lots of flowers. So one of the things I like about these flowers is, do you see all the different tones that they have, but and yet in the same color it's the family? the same color family, Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to play around with placing these smaller flowers wherever I'd like. And I do just place them down. I don't adhere until the very end, because I really want to make sure that I like it. And I try lots of different tones. And you know, at first, this sort of darker color scared me off a little because I thought, wow, that's really too dark than the other stuff. But you have to remember that contrast is it really is important. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that makes all the difference. So actually, what I find is the beauty of the other flowers pops out immediately as soon as you see that darker color come in. So I'm actually going to use two of those because I really like those. Now, not all the flowers have to be touching the vine because you can also do just with your eye, this seems to sort of extend even mm -hmm. though it's not actually touching the vine. And yet, looking at this, I feel like there's something missing. I feel like it's still not lush enough and I feel like the flowers are all too much the same size. So I wanna use a much bigger flower. Mm -hmm. So I have one here that is much bigger, but you know, it's the it's wrong not the color. Right color. Yeah. Easily solvable. One of the things I love about paper flowers, so I'm just gonna remove it from the backing 
And I'm just working on a Teflon sheet here so nothing gets dirty. Oh, we could use wax paper. You could use wax paper, home. you could use a paper palette, mm -hmm. whatever you'd like. You can use just newspaper, frankly. <laughs> That's true. And I'm just using a spray ink. And a lot of people like to do this so that it doesn't get everywhere. They like to do it like in a cardboard box, and that mm -hmm. way you make sure there's no overspray. Overspray, right. Exactly. So it's easy to use. I'm just going to pump it, and all of a sudden, I have this lovely flower that's exactly the right color for my layout. So now I would obviously dry that with a heat gun because I'm impatient. You could also let it dry for a couple hours if you're a patient person. Luckily I have one here that's already nice and dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that right there at the base and I may have to adjust other flowers to go with it. And I'm really kind of liking this, but it's still not lush enough. Mm -hmm. Well, leaves to the rescue. And I don't know if you can see this, Julie, but um, these leaves are actually sort of a frayed, almost like burlap well, material. Yeah, this is a fabric rather than a yeah. paper. Mm -hmm. And I think that fabric gives that lushness well, to Well, you've things. got contrasted textures in there as well as a contrast in uh, in color. Yeah, because even within this one set, look at that color variation. Mm -hmm. And of course, nature is full of wonderful color variation. So it looks very natural and cool. And there's sizes, different sizes. And I do like to make sure that not all the leaves are under, but some actually go on top on of. Because again, that's that natural nature look. Okay. Now, how are you going to stick this all together? Well, you know, I think there are a lot of different fabulous adhesives out there that work. My personal favorite is a gel medium. I like to use a heavy body gel medium because mm -hmm. I feel like it really holds things in place. Mm -hmm. So I just continue playing with these, putting them out. Now, what about the journaling that you have on there? Well, you know what? I just printed this out on my computer, and I'm actually going to have you cut that apart. And I'm okay. going to work on these chipboard pieces All over right. here. And one of the things I like to do is I like to layer my chipboard. You don't have to just leave it as it is. So I'm actually going to put this one piece of chipboard right on top of the other, and then I pop that out. And this is adhesive back chipboard, so it's really easy to do. I'm just going to put that down on my layout. And then right here I have a whole alphabet set. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop out the number two. Mm -hmm. And I like that tone-on-tone um, -tone look, so I think it's really cool that these are all slight variations of that kind of white-ish look. So you can see how quickly it's coming together. Very cool. And I've cut out your pieces of journal. Right. I tried to keep them in order, <laughs> and we're just going to put those up, probably with right. a small glue stick or something. Perfect. Here, let's go ahead. Let me pass these over to you. I'm going to put them in you. order, Julie. And you know, I find that if you type your journaling, it lets you edit it along the way. You can really think about what you want to say, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Julie, Thank you. this is really cool. Quick and it. easy. Okay, very quick and easy. Thank I love you. it. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back. Well, we're all about learning new techniques, and we have something even newer today, right? Yeah, we're making Zentangle earrings, which is kind of a new take on an old craft or something like that. So um, Zentangles, if you are uh, familiar with them at all, are basically doodling, but they zen you out, they calm you down, and there are some guidelines which I think are really helpful. Well, you know, it's true. When you just sit and, you know, let your hand move and doodle, it is. It's very calming. Very but relaxing. Those are the earrings, and we're going to make these? These are the earrings that we're going to be making, and I think they're um, lovely in their mismatched uniqueness <laughs> or something like that. We love imperfection, exactly. right? So I'm going to use uh, a permanent uh, black pen that has a very small, small tip. That's important. I often think that successful doodling is based on your tools as much as anything. And I'm just going to draw four random dots approximately in a square shape. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to connect them, and I'm not worried if it's straight or what's happening. I'm just basically connecting the dots. Connect the dots. Dot to dot. Yes, and then I'm gonna draw what's considered a tangle. And a tangle is just lines that, can you guess what? Tangle together. <laughs> <laughs> and thus the Zen tangle. And now in each of these spots, I'm now gonna do a different simple design. And so, for instance, this is an easy one to do. I'm going to draw three lines. One, two, three. Then I'm going to turn my paper 90 degrees, and I'm going to draw three lines. One, but I skip over what ah. I've already done, go to the next one. Two, skip over, and three, skip over. And now I'm going to draw one in crossways, so 45 degree change. So I draw, there's one, and I'm going to do the other half of it. And then I do, there's two, and here is three. Well, I'm going to follow along over do here. Do it. It's too yeah. fun. And then I'm going to turn it again, 45 degrees, and there's my one line, 
and then I do two, and there's my three. And now I'm gonna go back to that original line that I did, and I'm gonna do three lines on the right side, and I connect them down here, and then I do three lines on the left side, three, one, two, three, and then I'm just gonna repeat it, turning the 90 degrees, going in the exact same order. And the trick to this one, as with a lot of Zen tangling, is that something so simple like a line, if you just think about it in an ordered way, it really transforms into something sort of magical and beautiful, and yet all you're doing is drawing three just lines three repeatedly lines. Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And I think sometimes people get intimidated by drawing or things that look complicated. But as you can see, as I've worked on this, all this is is just the idea of doing three lines over and over, and you have this beautiful, intricate looking design. Okay. So now, are you going to do the one. same one over here or something different? No, I don't like to do things that are the oh. same. <laughs> so, we're going to do something different. So, this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a grid. And a grid, right, is just a bunch of straight lines again. Love my straight lines. And then they're crossed. So I just cross them. And I don't worry about, you know, some of the boxes are running off the edge, as you say. Then I'm gonna draw basically an eye shape. An eye shape from corner to corner. Boom, boom. Can you see how that's kind of like mm -hmm. you would put the eyeball in the middle? Uh -huh. So I just keep going around, going around. And you do that all and in the And you just the, keep playing around course. and having a good time. Okay, what you gonna do over here? You know, I might do some scallops, <laughs> something easy like that. You know, zentangling is just about having fun and playing and not pre-planning. And you just, again, these echoes, or times where I repeat the shape again and again, just makes it look so wonderful and detailed. And so I did the echoes on the inside, but I can also do the echoes I'll make on them the outside. Even. Uh -huh. You know, so that you get echoes everywhere. So you're just letting the pen kind of lead you as I you move. Am. Okay, you gotta fill in that little okay, space. Okay, what should we do? You know what you can do? Just a bunch of circles. Oh, that's easy. There you go. Because just they don't a have bunch to be of perfect. Circles. Exactly. And you just keep going and going. And I have one here that you can see is already done. But here's one of the tricks, which is because these are earrings and they're gonna be seen on both sides. Actually, can I give you this? Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Because these are earrings that are gonna be seen on both sides, you actually need to do both sides. Ah, so you do both see. sides have to be the same? No, oh, in fact, that's part of the fun of it, right? <laughs> Exploring something new. And then, so once I have both sides all zen tangled up, I'm simply going to take some scissors and I'm gonna go ahead, and I don't worry about the lines. I'm just gonna cut, 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 hack it just right off. Just very random cutting just too. Just very, you know, get that basic square going. If a little bit ends up staying on, it's fine. So then I have this here, and I'm gonna cut it in half. Boom, and guess what I now have? Two You've earrings. Got a pair of earrings. You know, and I'm gonna coat these with a um, gel medium or something else that's gonna make some them- Some kind of a sealer. Some kind of sealer so that uh, you don't get uh, any sort of sweating or dirt or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I have two here that are already sealed. Okay. And then I'm simply going to punch a hole right in the top. I just grab that. Let's see if one bang was enough. Yes, it was. And then I'm going to put in an eyelet. So I just put that right in the hole. Flip it over. I take my eyelet setter. And use the other side. Put it right, right in there. Yep. Oops. There you go. Just bang it down a couple good times. And then you just add your earring add wires. Add my earring hook. And you are good to go and anywhere. I have a new pair of earrings. <laughs> but don't you go anywhere because we're going to be right back. Well, if you want to know where creativity is happening, it's right here with Joe Pearson from Michaels. And you're going to show us how easy it is to do block printing? I am, but you know what? When you look at it, you're going to be really surprised what we're going to actually make that block print out of. So I want to show you how we got okay. started. Now, what's really cool about this is, is you can take any piece of artwork, mm -hmm. okay? So maybe it's something that you've drawn or maybe your children or grandchildren. And what we've done is we've just made a copy of this artwork. And this is a piece of craft foam. Okay. And this is what we're actually going to use. So what we did is we made a tracing and we used graphite paper on, you know, we traced it here and, and traced it with graphite paper. And then what I did is, look, this is gonna kind of be magic. We're gonna lay it down on the piece of foam. Uh -huh. And then we're just gonna really, we're almost making a rubbing. The oh, graphite okay. paper is gonna go off on to the foam. Okay. And by the magic, it will have worked. Look oh, look at that. Okay, so here we have one. 
that we have started now. What okay. we're going to do, I'm going to give you that. Mm -hmm. We are going to use a just a pen. And what we're doing is we're actually indenting down into this foam. So we are going to trace everywhere. So I'm pushing kind of hard down into the foam. Okay. And so a simple designs are good or? Absolutely. But mm -hmm. you know, if you'll see on here, here I've got one look, we've got it all done. Look, we even added all the fun squiggly lines. Oh, so you yeah. can really get you as really detailed, get detailed as you want, want to. to. So now what we're cool. going to do is we're going to take our paint. Now we just used acrylic paint. And this is a water-based paint, This right? is a water-based paint, right? <clears throat> so we're just going to lay this down here. And we're using a brayer. Here, I'll do that for here, you, I'll Joe. give you that. And we're just going to take our brayer and we're going to fill it with the, with the paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a nice coat on there. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to put it over our image. All over the surface. Now, you can look and see. See here, I want to go back because I want to make sure that I've gotten <clears throat> it completely covered. Okay. Okay. So there's two ways to print this. You can either turn it over and print it down on the paper, or we can take our piece of paper and just lay it on top. Okay. And then look what we're going to do. We're just going to rub. Just press right. You know what, Joe? Could we actually use the craft foam that has adhesive on the back and make a stamp or something? You know what's really fun about that? Because yes, you can. Then when you take it, you could cut this all apart and you could have his little legs on there, peel off the sticky, put it on either a piece. Of, I mean, you could even use corrugated cardboard. Uh -huh. Put it on a piece of wood and then you actually have created your own rubber oh, stamp. That's cool. How cool is that? So look, we're just going to lift this directly off. Oh, I and love look at the our picture. look of that. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's very cool. Now, what we did with these is you can either print, you know, a couple different things like this, or look what we did. We just, I'm going to put this over here. Okay. And we just cut it out, and then we just put it on a fun little card. So here you can print it again. Look at all the fun colors. And we're just going to use some tape, and we'll put it on. Now, you can go back and add some fun little color behind that. And if you wanted to, you could add some more detail if you wanted to outline it in black or whatever you want to do. That but is cool. Look at the fun things we have. I know. And you've got another card right down front. I love those buttons for the eyes. I know. Aren't they fun? <laughs> and then also you have the gift bag. We have a great little gift bag. And we've just added, again, some paper and put a little ribbon on there. But i got to tell you, I think my very favorite is the piece that we've actually framed. So we took four different pieces with the different colors mm -hmm. and added it just on top of some other fun scrapbook paper put it on a great frame and you really have some very kind of pop art type looking. It is. You know what? It, that's my favorite too. It really, and I love the, but I have to say, I love the way that you put the twig on the gift bag right on the that little, fun? Wow, that's so cool. He's, <laughs> he's ready to fly off to the party. Joe, that's fantastic. And I see you've also used this paint to sponge on top of it. We the, did. We just dry brushed that on, right. you know, taking the, cool. taking the little light coat of paint and brushing it on and you got a great piece of art. And we're good to go. I know. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. You're this welcome. is really great. Good. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, I'm here with Jennifer McCord from Exacto, and she's got an awesome banner project for us. Now, you've probably made a lot of cards with your scrapbooking supplies, but a banner is like a card that went crazy. It's just a big, splashy way to say, hey, happy birthday, or how are you, or I'm so glad you had a baby. So, tell us a little bit how we're going to make this banner. Great. Well, we're going to get started by using a pivot trimmer. Okay. To cut exact angles here. Oh, so that's so a we'll trimmer that like basically this. cuts on an angle, and I see that it lights up, which mm -hmm. is so cool. Let's set that aside, and then we'll flip it. Okay, now does that require um, electricity to be plugged in for it to light up like that? Uh, no, actually, this is running on batteries, which came mm. with it. You know, it makes cutting in a dark corner actually possible. <laughs> Or those old eyes, you know, late at night when you get tired. That's right. So well, then what you'll want to do is use some glue. Okay. Preferably your glue stick. And okay. you'll glue this onto the page. Okay. Which we've already done. I'll take that for you. So we move forward. I see. We've gone pink this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add a decorative edge okay. using our decorative scissors here. Okay. So as you cut, it's very important to take your time and line up. Oh, I see. I Your always angles. wondered about that. How do you get it to line up perfectly? Mm -hmm. So you just cool that nice, nice and edge. Slow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I think, you know, when you add an edge to a project like this, it just adds that little something special. And I always find maybe it's because my mom used to put rick rack on things, but mm -hmm. that pink edge really always says party. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And what's really fun is you can choose from a variety of different designs with these oh, cool. scissors as well. 
So Very cool. if you go through. Okay. And it's so I can see how quick it is to just cut those flags mm -hmm. right out. And it's one of those things that it doesn't really take any longer than regular scissors, but it mm -mm. just adds a little something extra. Right. So now that you've cut out your flag shape, yeah. then you'll want to create some extra strips for okay. decoration. Using up those scraps so for good That's use. right. And you know, I noticed out. on your finished piece, one of the nice things about cutting the strips out of the same paper mm -hmm. is it gives us almost kind of this effect where you can't tell whether the strips are on top or the white paper is on top, or it looks like you've done something really complicated when actually what you have here is something that's quite simple. I mm -hmm. mean, this is really just putting strips on top. Yep. And I so, think we'll magically show how that looks right now. Yep, so then you'll want to position them in mm -hmm. place and then you can glue these in place and trim off the edges. Okay, cool. So, um, do we want to go ahead and sure. glue those in place? Grab that and stick it down. That's and now this right. is a great project you do with your kids, right? Because they're not going to cut mm -hmm. themselves with the scissors oh. and they're fun. Mm -hmm. Kids always like those decorative edge things. <laughs> Actually, they I, have really to, do. I should say kids. I know I think of my brother as a child, but he, whenever he comes over, he was always looking for the decorative edge scissors. And he's 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So as we place these, then the next step is we'll trim off the edges. If you want to go ahead okay. and take care of that. I will do that and for then you. Your scissors. Thank you very much. And then we'll also want to trace our letters onto okay. the back of our pattern paper. Okay. So that then we can cut those out for our flags as well. Okay. So with a, a letter like the, the A mm -hmm. here, or perhaps a B, where you might need a swivel knife, here we'll use a hobby knife to cut out the center first, okay. and then we'll cut out the edge. Okay. And you know, when using a craft knife, you always have to be working on your mat. You want to make sure that you're being really safe about that, not cutting into your dining room table or something. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I have punched and cut into mm -hmm. a couple tables in my lifetime. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. And you know what? I'm going to give you the scissors so you can cut out Thank the rest you. of that A. Thank you. And you know, I always find that I like to turn the paper. Mm -hmm. instead of turning the scissors because I find like okay. I get, it's easier for me to cut. Gotcha. I don't know if that's just a brain thing for me, but it's like I feed the paper into the right. scissors. Right, you know? that is nice. And I like using these okay. tiny scissors too, mm -hmm. don't you? Because I always think it's one of those funny things, like the scissors make you a better cutter because you're not using huge clunky ones and they're so precise and small. Right. Which is good. They and I can see how fast you've done that. For the single. And now you don't have to worry, right, about buying, mm -mm. coordinating stickers or anything because you have it cut right out of that pattern paper. Right, so we have our A, uh -huh. and I'm going to glue this okay. using a glue stick. Easy enough. So You know, I always find that heat and pressure really gets those glue sticks to stick, so you know, sometimes you have to sit on your project mm -hmm. and get that heat and pressure going. Yep, and then if you add that Thank to our you. flag, I will. I'll go ahead and cut a strip here. Okay. Now we'll pivot our trimmer <gasps> over cool. to the straight position here and lock mm -hmm. that in place, and then we'll cut this okay. like so. And that light just comes on automatically. Mm -hmm. That's so neat. Okay, and then once we have our strip, mm -hmm. what we'll want to do is lightly score it okay. using a metal ruler. I see, and you're going to work on the craft line. sheet, or is it okay to cut on the trimmer? Um, it's okay to use the trimmer as a base, because oh, this fantastic. is actually a mat as well. That's really so, cool. Again, you can see the lines mm -hmm. here, so you can match it up, mm -hmm. and we'll lightly score here. And I see that you've pleated this one already, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to take some tape. I'm going to put it in an arc right across here, because now that you've pleated the paper, I know that you said that that makes it so that you can curve it right across there. So cool. And I see on the beautiful finished banner that you've brought those curved pieces. You've added some sparkly buttons. It really looks fantastic. Jennifer, you have been a fantastic guest. Thank you so much for showing this, this project to us. And we'll be right back. Well, we've got one more spice to add to our scrapbook soup today. So what you got, Jules? Well, you know what? Everybody loves rubber stamping. I know you do. I especially. do. But you have to see this cool machine. Mm -hmm. With this machine, you can actually make your own clear stamps from your own images. Love and that. everything you need is included. And I actually love the size of it because mm -hmm. we have so many tools at home to work with and everything. And this is nice and small and compact. And it really, really is easy to do. And I love okay. the fact that you can take your own image that's Very on a cool. computer. So how do we get and started? And there's software mm -hmm. that you will load into the computer so you can manipulate the image. And then you actually print it out on special sheeting. Okay. And then, and then after you do that, I know that you have a negative left over, mm -hmm. which is really 
really cool, and I think you could do it, use it for lots of other crafting things. But what you do is you put it into the machine on a kind of gel pack, right? And then uh, it does the machine. All the machine work does all yeah, the work. It sort a of UV cooks in light there, in there, yep. and everything. It's and when you take it out, I, I've heard it's kind of a massy polymery kind of blob, and you just take it to the <laughs> sink and you wash, you wash away all that yeah. excess polymer, and then ta-da! Revealed is your fabulous new clear stamp. And I know that you would put an adhesive backing uh -huh. on there so it's ready to go and, and with you your can stamp little with handle, it. And then you're ready mm -hmm. to stamp with it, ready so to go. So let's take a picture or a look at this cute little kitty here. Yeah, and it's such a detailed stamp partially because it's made from a photo. I know, isn't that gorgeous? I think that's and a cool idea. And here's the idea. negative, and then here's actually the stamp that you would and use to you put see? on the stamp And can't you see, you could holder. take the negative, put it in a little frame, it's like a sun catcher that's oh, clear. Oh, I know, Wouldn't put that it be in cute? the window in a flat yeah. glass frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fabulous. And the, I know that the machine, you told me, it comes with lots of different negatives already made so that you can do that if you don't feel like doing right. the whole computer well, thing. it gets you started. Like I said, everything you need is in there. Uh, including explicit step-by-step -step instructions. I see they have pictures. I like yes, pictures. Yes, they have pictures. And you know what? It does look as if there are a lot of steps, mm -hmm. but it's a very quick process. It takes cool. 10, 15 minutes. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, visit our website and let us know. See you next time for Scrapbook Soup. <laughs> visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com for a mix of ideas, a mix of ingredients, a mix of designers, and all of the instructions for every project found on this series of Scrapbook Soup. Create your own recipe for great scrapbooking. This is Show 103. A complete set of all 13 episodes of Scrapbook Soup Series 100 is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. A mix of designers, techniques, and projects, all in one complete package to watch anytime. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com to place your order. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com.